immunosuppressive treatment for severe aplastic anemia has not changed much in about three decades. That may be about to change. We're going to talk about a new drug added to standard immunosuppression for aplastic anemia, associate, associates uh, with count recovery and increased response rates. And this is a late-breaking clinical trial here at Azure. And what I'd like to do is introduce you to Dr. Danielle Townsley, who is a staff clinician in the cell biology section of the National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. First off, welcome. Tell me about this particular agent. Yeah, so this is a, a drug that we originally used at the NIH um, uh, with surprising results in patients with refractory severe plastic anemia. These are patients that had failed multiple rounds of therapies, um, remained transfusion dependent, uh, and the drug was given to them as a single agent, and around 40% of those patients actually responded when the drug was used on its own. Um, they came off transfusions, and usually the, the, the interesting thing about the drug is that it was originally developed to uh, promote the production of platelets and, and was FDA approved in 2008 for the production of platelets in ITP. Um, but in the study in refractory aplastic anemia, we found that the patients had improvements not just in their platelets, but in their red cells and their white cells. Uh, so clearly the drug it has um, some properties which it is capable of uh, promoting hematopoiesis, not just in the platelets, but actually in other counts. And so it was logical then to use the drug in, in new onset severe aplastic anemia. I mean, back in 2009, there was a paper immunosuppressive treatment for aplastic anemia, are we hitting the ceiling? This has been a difficult area for first line, correct? That's, correct. That's absolutely correct. So in the last three decades, multiple attempts, many <laughs> prospective, some randomized trials trying to change up the immunosuppressive uh, agents, you know, doing things like frontline rabbit ATG, which is more um, uh, uh, immunopotent, um, or changing out from ATG to cytoxin, cyclophosphamide. Um, or adding other growth factors like GCSF right. or erythropoietin, none of these have been beneficial. Um, and the, over the, these three decades, the, the sort of response rate with immunosuppressive therapy, ATG cyclosporine, has remained very steady and static between 60 to 65 percent on the most part. Um, so in this trial, you know, seeing these increases in overall and many complete responses is uh, almost 20 percent improvement on both the overall response rate and complete response rate is, is, is impressive. Well, I think the way you talked about it was you used the phrase robust improvements in blood counts. Yes. In the abstract. And I thought that that's pretty amazing. <laughs> that's a nice yeah, collection. Yeah. yeah. So what we're, what we're seeing is that um, not only are we seeing more patients responding uh, with the combination therapy, but those patients that do respond um, uh, have, seem to have more robust blood counts than when we look at our patients who have uh, responded to just ATG cyclosporine in the past. So how many patients did you look at? So we have 92 patients enrolled. Um, and uh, the data that we're showing on Tuesday morning is essentially the patients that are valuable so far, which is nearly all 92. Um, we have uh, about 20 patients available on our third cohort, um, so just, just shy of 80, of uh, just shy of the 92, around 81 patients total um, are fully available at the primary endpoint. Um, and you know, right now the results are you know, 80 to 90 percent overall response rate, with 30 to 40 percent complete response rate. And then the cohort three, where we're giving L-trauma pack immediately on day one, um, and extending that out for six months, appears to be the optimal regimen right now, with the overall response rate around 95 percent, the complete response rate around 60 percent. And as you know, the the complete response rate um, in the past with ATG cyclosporine alone was around 12 percent. So, you know, this is impressive. So how is it working? So, you know, we uh, think that the way that it's probably working is stimulating stem or progenitor cells, and that's based on what's known about um, uh, thrombopoietin receptors. l thrombopag is a thrombopoietin receptor agonist, and uh, we know that thrombopoietin receptors are on megakaryocytes, and they promote megakaryopoiesis when the, when the receptor is stimulated, and therefore platelet production. But we also know that the, the, the TPO receptor is also on stem cells and, and early progenitors. Um, and, and it has been shown already that thrombopoietin is capable of you know, I expanding uh, uh, and stimulating stem cells. And so it's logical that, that l pack is working in that fashion. So how's the safety? So we actually found that the combination therapy of l pack with cyclosporine and ATG was actually very well tolerated. We had very few grade three or four events 
um, two uh, events occurred in which we had severe cutaneous reactions seen associated with L-tromopag, which required us to stop drug in those two patients. 10% uh, of patients had low grade, uh, grade two to three sort of um, uh, increases in, in LFTs, but those are all sort of known uh, with L-tromopag, and it does not appear to be uh, increased toxicity with the combination. So what's next? Yeah, so what's next is that we are actually um, uh, trying to combine uh, uh, sort of prospective genomic screening, both germline genomic screening and somatic acquired uh, mutations in, in, the, in the hematopoietic uh, compartment uh, to try to identify who's likely to, to uh, respond, who's likely not to respond, and, but also um, clonal evolution uh, in aplastic anemia. And you know, seven patients did uh, clonally evolve on, on the study, and you know, it, it, aplastic anemia in general, even prior um, uh, to this trial, has about a 10 to 15 percent rate of patients going on to clonally evolved MDS. And so, you know, we are concerned that that is um, uh, an area that still needs to be addressed, um, and uh, uh, it will need longer follow-up to address that. But primarily, we want to do prospective uh, genomic screening. Congratulations and also good luck. Thank you very much. This is a tough area. And Dr. Towsley's paper is just one of many we're covering here for ASH Clinical News. Please look around online and, of course, in the magazine. For ASH Clinical News, I'm Rick McGuire.